Previously on the Dice Girls. But I think that this situation might call for the bagpipes. No. Maybe if I play the bagpipes, it'll get their attention. <laughs> yes, please. No. Perhaps I should play you still the have bagpipes. To, you still you're have still to unconscious. <laughs> Do you know why you're even here? It was just because one dwarf lady told us that there might maybe possibly be a lead here. You see a short figure. Uh, wearing what appears to be a patchwork cloak. Huddled in the corner is a small family of gnomes. They're all wearing dirtied patchwork cloaks. Something is out there and it's, it's hunting our people. Will our party catch up with the patchwork cloaked figure? How will they be received by a bigger city? And will Trigus finally find a stage big enough to hold his confidence? You're about to find out. With sugar and spice and a roll of the dice, you're listening to The Dice Girls. The three of you have just been given entry into Narstad, this, uh, this city. If you remember, it's surrounded by a kind of a newer looking white stone wall. And the city kind of appears to be laid out in a bit of a circular pattern. There's two main cobblestone roads. It kind of looks like it separates it into four quadrants. Um, and when you enter the city to your left, you can see what appears to be a large shopping area. It's paved with darker cobblestones. You can you can make out a few signs because the shops are pretty massive on this, uh, the ones that you can see. Um, the two signs that you can see immediately say blacksmith and jeweler. Um, and then a shop a little ways down the road, you can kind of, it's also a very large shop, you can kind of make out a sign that says armory. Um, and then you can see a few other shops behind those three. To your right of the main road, you can see that there's a large forested area, or there was at one point. It's been cleared out completely, um, and you see a large mansion not too far off the road. And then there are other mansions in the distance, and you notice that all of the mansions that you can see, they look exactly the same, and they each have their own smaller cobblestone road leading up to them. So this place is real weird. <laughs> <laughs> Ragna's eyes light up like a kid in a candy store when she sees the armor smith and, <laughs> and the blacksmith. And I think she squeals a little. <laughs> <laughs> She's just kind of staring over at the blacksmiths and she goes, So what are we doing now? <laughs> uh, what, where are we, what are we, uh, we can, like, should we, we take should a we, break, right? Should like, we go to the blacksmith? <laughs> I, I don't want to go to the blacksmith. <laughs> I don't have any money left, but I just want to look. <laughs> Do you want to go to the blacksmith too, Trigus? Yes. Is that where we perform? Nope. No? Oh. No, they've got sharp objects there. Oh, interesting. Okay, let's go. <laughs> All right, so the three of you head towards the blacksmith's shop, um, and as you approach it, you notice two very ornate and fancy swords crossed over the top above the doorway, um, kind of decoratively, um, and you walk in, and it doesn't look like any blacksmith shop you would have ever expected to see. Um, normally you think of a blacksmith shop as, I don't want to say dirty, but there's, you know, there's, blacksmithing is very hands-on mm -hmm. work. And this place looks really fancy. Um, the floor is completely clean and polished, and you, you don't really see any of the the kind of tools that you would associate with blacksmithing. Um, it's it's very strange. It's also the only blacksmith you have ever seen that has a receptionist. <laughs> <laughs> so this place is real weird. <laughs> um, the receptionist is an elf, and he looks very bored. He's, he's twirling a quill between his fingers. Uh, he barely looks up as you enter the shop and says, I'm sorry, the owner is out to lunch. And there's a four-month waiting list for something to be made. So I'm afraid, unless you'd like to get on our waiting list, there's not much we can do for you today. What What happened to your ears? <sighs> I'm sorry? They're very pointy. Do you make those here in this shop? Have you never seen an elf before? Uh, I, have I, Magma? I have don't I? believe you have, Trigus. Oh, he's quite unusual. Well, and no, we met, um... Coralius. Oh, that's right. The oh, jerk. I wasn't focused on his 
ears, so perhaps they are brothers. <laughs> the Warren looks at you really funny, and he seems pretty insulted. <laughs> and says, you know, actually, our waiting list has just filled up. I'm so sorry, my friends. If you would kindly leave the shop. No, 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 shop, don't, 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 don't listen to him. I'm, he's, please leave. He's a fish. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm sorry we ha- cannot help you today. Crap. <laughs> please leave our shop. Okay. Okay, So now do we get soup? <laughs> well, I'm, uh... I wanted to go to the armor smith too, but you know, let's let's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, we we can go get s- soup if, if that's what you want, Trigus. I would like to get soup and make friends. Yeah, uh, maybe it's a good opportunity for us to ask around and see if anybody knows anything about the thing that we barely know anything about. <laughs> 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 Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> So, so, where's the soup store? <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't, you don't see a restaurant, but it is a big shopping plaza. Um, and like I said, the, the couple of stores that you can see are pretty massive. From the outside of the blacksmith, as you get closer, you can kind of see behind it, um, there is a... Um, it's not exactly a storefront, it looks kind of like a factory almost, it's labeled smeltery. Um, and you can see another shop next to it, but you can't quite make out the sign on the door. Okay, I guess let's just go... Well, I guess we can check out and see what that sign is, but let's walk around town and see if we can find a place to eat. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so as you, um, as you kind of... You're kind of walking away from that main road into the shopping area. As you're walking in between the, the massive, massive stores, you could see the three shops, the blacksmith, the jeweler, and the armory. And then behind them are the two shops, the smeltery, and as you get closer, you see the enchanter. Um, and then there's one shop behind that called, um, just labeled Carpenter. And then kind of laid out diagonally are some smaller, some smaller businesses. You see one labeled apothecary, you see a bank, you see uh, what appears to be a food market, and you see a playhouse. Playhouse? Like a McDonald's like a... playhouse? <laughs> no, like a theater. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I feel like I should do uh, a perception check, because this place is kind of weirding Mara out a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Seven plus three is ten. You kind of notice that all of the people walking around in this part of the shopping plaza look very stuffy and very mm-hmm. fancy. They're all dressed uh, in very uh, richly made clothes with fabrics that are not very common at all. They're, they're rare fabrics. And you also notice that none of them actually seem to be visiting the businesses. They're really kind of just milling about. Um, they're not actually paying these businesses any any patronage. Guys, this place is kind of weird. <laughs> and have you noticed the people are not even like going inside the shops? Uh, I don't think Rock has noticed anything. I think she's, <laughs> she's just dejected. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's she's a little excited to like be back in a big city because that's that's the kind of place that she grew up in, and that's the kind of place she likes. And uh, and so I think she's like not paying enough attention to what's going on, and she's more just like excited to be mm-hmm. here. Uh, what's weird? I don't get it. These people, they're not like looking at the shops really, or. Going into the shops, everybody's just kind of wandering. They don't look broke. (laughs) Maybe you've got a point. (laughs) I mean, if the blacksmith refused our patronage and didn't look like there was a whole lot going on in there, doesn't that seem kind of weird to you guys? They had a waiting list. I mean, maybe everybody already knows that they don't need to go there. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't know what, I don't know what would make people act this way. What about you, Trigus? <laughs> I'm confused as well. I think we need to speak with some people and make some friends. <laughs> Would you like to go to try and speak to somebody? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! I kind of oh, would no. just like to watch oh, it. Like four people turn their heads and <laughs> covers their eyes. Oh god, oh god. <laughs> I raise my hand. Hello! I am Trigus Garganath. A couple more people look, but they keep walking. <laughs> They're not as enthralled with me as the... Yeah. Smaller town folk. Okay. Right. 
okay, yeah, maybe. And you appear a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly. Well, a five foot fish man. Yeah. Hi. Hello. I'm only five foot. <laughs> That's why Rachna's able to carry you around <laughs> so <laughs> great. That's right. Maybe we can find like the what am I trying? Like the entertainment district. <laughs> <laughs> if we find the stage, I can play my bagpipes. Please, everyone, and then we will have our answers. And you think we can make some money that way? Yes, I believe Maybe. we can. <laughs> People usually throw things at me while I'm playing. <laughs> Maybe this time it will be coins. Has it ever been coins? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, but today, maybe that day. Would you like to go check out the playhouse, or would you like to just play your bagpipes oh, on the street? Yes. The playhouse would be magnificent. Would you like to go check it out, Trigus? Yes, because I, I don't know if you are all aware that I am a master of the stage as well. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's where we first met. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's right. True. It's all coming back to me along with my height. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you did almost get killed by wolves yesterday. You've got me. Yes. I'm a rattle. Yeah. <laughs> a little concussed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to the playhouse we go. The playhouse is a really cool looking building. It's um, most, of the, most of the buildings in this city are made of stone. Um, the roads are cobblestone. And this playhouse is completely made of very beautiful dark wood. Mm. Um, and it's it's just, it's a really beautiful, uh, a, a nice looking playhouse. Um, and as you walk through the doors, um, you enter into uh, an open air auditorium kind of place. Um, it's, it's got the sections of wooden seating and you can see a big wooden stage that has a balcony above it um, and, and then it's open air above that. And running around on the stage, uh, you see several people milling about. Um, they are currently what's looking like they're changing, changing scenes. Um, it, it almost appears to be kind of a rehearsal of some sort. Wonderful. Follow me. <laughs> I feel like we kind of follow at a distance. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yes, and I just walk right up to them and just walk up onto the stage. And are they pe they're people? Um, they are, there's a, a mixture of, of races. Yeah, there's some mm -hmm. humans. There's definitely some elves. Um, you see a couple of dwarves. It's it's a it's a good mixture of different of different humanoid races. Uh, what ho! I am here. Um, a couple of the uh, a couple of the people, um, uh, a human and a dwarf, who are are kind of carrying a prop um, off stage. They they look at you and they smile. Um, and the the dwarf man uh, he says, "Welcome to our playhouse. Um, we're kind of in the middle of a rehearsal right now, um, but." Um, my name is Greg, and um, we, we're I'm, I'm happy to meet you. What was your name? Trigus Garganath. Wow, Trigus Garganath. Well, um, welcome to our playhouse. Uh, if you have any questions, um, um, Verstam is running around here somewhere. He's kind of in charge of this whole thing, so uh, he would he would be the good the good person to look for. He's uh, he's hard to miss. He's a big he's a big old half orc guy with a purple mohawk. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, so uh, so look for look for Verstum, and he'll be able to help you out. Okay, so we go and we start looking <laughs> for him, and then I lean, I lean over to Mara. Are we sure this is a good idea? <laughs> I kind of just want to see how this turns out. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um, so you manage to make your way backstage, and and a couple of people wave to you friendly, um, like they're not. They're not too startled by a, a random person kind of walking around um, their rehearsal. Um, as you make your way backstage, you see a uh, tall half-orc uh, man with a big purple mohawk. And he's, he's very energetic and he's kind of like, he's kind of directing people, pointing them where to go and, and saying, you know, giving them directions on, on how to set up for the next scene. What ho, Rockna's brother! <laughs> It's nice to see you. Rachna, have you seen your brother is here? That's not... I don't know that guy. <laughs> you don't? Uh, the name is Trigus Garganas. Verstam's eyes get a little wide, um, but he, he nods and he says, It's very nice to meet you, sir. Are you 
What brings you to my playhouse today? I just need to know where do I stand for my performance? Where the spotlights will best shine on my scales? He, um, he is holding kind of like a, it's a, like a wooden clipboard kind of, I don't know if clipboards exist in medieval <laughs> times, but he's got one. <laughs> um, he's ahead of his time. He's got a clipboard and he starts flipping through the parchments that are on there and saying, are you a stand-in for one of my sick uh, actors today? Is that what's going on? Uh, no, I don't believe I'm, we've met. I would be the lead in anything that I perform. He kind of cocks his head a little bit and, and studies you a little. You are a very interesting man, Trigus. Um, what kind of performances do you do? There are many things that I do. Uh, I, I am magical on the bagpipes. I am equally as magical on the stage. Acting is, oh. is my specialty. Yes, so... Well, I'm afraid that you are a couple of weeks late for the tryouts for the main roles, but we're always happy to have extras. If you and your friends would like to join our production today, uh, we're, we're just in the middle of rehearsal, and we could always use extras to play things like townspeople and... and uh, townspeople who play bagpipes. Well, I don't know if we quite have room in this production for a bagpipe solo, but if uh, if you do well as an extra, we would be happy to audition for our next... Uh, our next uh, Play. Wonderful. Magma. <laughs> Rachna. Isn't this wonderful? Uh. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know. I don't think, I don't know if we'll be in town long enough to, to join the next play that they do. Oh, so that's, that's true. It's just too bad. I guess we're done. <laughs> <laughs> what if we just stay here and join live here <laughs> just live here and perform forever <laughs> Trigus like rises to fame people flock from all over the world to see Trigus Garganath perform at the Narstad Playhouse I feel like we should ask him about the gnomes maybe um first um have you noticed any gnomes that have appeared <laughs> or disappeared or disappeared <laughs> That is a very strange question, young lady. Um, I'm sorry, I don't believe I got your name. My name is Mara. Mara, and what is your name? Rachna. Rachna. Well, it is very nice to meet the both of you. And what you had a question about gnomes? Yes, we've so we've we have met some gnomes who say that there are trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I give up on speaking for the rest of my life. There are trouble. Welcome, friends and adventurers, to Dungeons and Blackguards, a Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition actual play podcast. Join us each week as the party tries to survive DM Robulon's homebrew sandbox campaign. Episode 1, A Deadly Point. Uh, there we go. High five. I'm a big robot. I put my hand up and I don't get it. I high five my own hand. <laughs> yeah. And then run out of the cell. <laughs> Join us and listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey guys, it's Becca, your DM here. It's time for another Dice Girls solo. Man, two weeks is a long time between talking to you guys. So much has happened. I'm going to try and go through it super quick. First of all, launch day, you guys made it absolutely incredible. It was super awesome. I want to say thank you to our new patrons. In the last two weeks, we've gotten three new patrons. Huge, huge shout out to Jake, huge shout out to James, and another huge shout out to Joe. Thank you so, so much for being patrons on our Patreon page. If you would like to join them and hear your name shouted out, it is patreon.com slash the dice girls. Uh, I want to give a special shout out right now to Star Dust Pixie. She is seven years old and she figured out we had dark vision way before we did. 
So she is clearly one smart cookie. Hi, Stardust Pixie. Thank you so much for listening. Um, we've got some really cool upcoming things that we're all very excited about. On Tuesday, December 4th, all four of us are going to be joining the Friendly Dungeon Master for the Knights of the Tabletop Fireside Chat at 6 p.m. Central Time on their Twitch channel. It's twitch.tv slash the Friendly Dungeon Master. That's coming up again December 4th. And then on Sunday, December 16th, I'm going to be joining Scraticus Academy on their Twitch channel to play my very first ever one shot live. So that's going to be fun and exciting as well. And that one's going to be at 9 p.m. Central Time on twitch.tv slash S-C-R-A-T-T-I-C-U-S. So we're super excited about everything that is coming up and hoping that you are continuing to enjoy the show. And I will talk to you again in two weeks. targeting gnomes and it it led us here not not here to your to the playhouse <laughs> but here to here to here to Narstad. his eyes got a little wide for a second uh, and we're just asking around to see if anyone knows anything ah well um do you know uh gnomes are not very common here in Narstad, um so i i haven't really Please, you must understand. I I practically live here. <laughs> I don't I don't get out of these four walls very very often. Um, the, this playhouse is my life, and I uh, I I don't believe that I've heard anything uh, regarding gnomes in particular. I'm so sorry, but my offer still stands. If you would like to be extras in our production this evening, Rock kind of looks nervous. Again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I I do not. <laughs> I can I, I concur with Rockna. <laughs> And I'm crying. <laughs> oh. Little fish tears. <laughs> but I, I think Trigus might be interested. Yeah. Trigus looks very interested. <laughs> well, if your friend is performing tonight, perhaps you two would like tickets to our show to see him perform. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. That um, would that would be very nice. Thank you. <laughs> Trigus, would you like to be an extra tonight in our in our performance? I would love to. Wonderful. Wonderful. I feel like now we should pull Trigus aside and say, Trigus, when you're being an extra, that means you're not the star of the show. I will be extra. Believe me. Oh, no. Trigus, uh, <laughs> it's very rude to try to outshine the lead in the play. How can I help but outshine the lead? Just by breathing. Yes, but if you just do the breathing part, you won't seem as rude. <laughs> Oh, I don't want to seem rude. I want to make friends. I'll do what I can yes. to to dim my glow. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. <laughs> uh, Rockna leans over to Burstone and kind of goes, "Do you need like an opening show or something? Maybe you could like bagpipe before your show or something like that." He <laughs> he loves the spotlight. <laughs> Burstone uh, rubs his chin and uh, he he looks at Trigus and Rockna, please roll a persuasion check. 16. Whoa. <laughs> I'm going on. <laughs> you know, we currently don't have an opening act, but I like the way you think. I would love to hear you perform before I agree to have you as an opening as an opening act, but I am definitely open to that idea. Trigus, you have wonderful friends. Thank you. Would you, um, I've got a few moments right now. If you are prepared, would you care to perform, uh... Always. A bagpipe solo Always. for me. Yes, definitely. All right, I'm. You have my full attention. Okay. Uh, may I ask that you uh, please be seated so that you don't collapse with joy? He he looks around and you're backstage and there's really not any chairs, <laughs> but he's she's pretty good natured and so he he kind of gives you a little smile and then sits cross legged on the floor <laughs> and looks up at you. <laughs> But not too far up, because Trigus is five foot. <laughs> five foot tall, yeah. So I, I pull out my bagpipes and start to play. All right, roll me a performance. Oh. Uh, D20? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. A 14. a 14! And then I know you get to add stuff. Performance is under person. Yeah. Yeah. Two. So, and then... 16. Okay. 16. <laughs> yeah. You do a pretty darn good job. Wow. And Versum, he listens very attentively. 
You see him kind of nodding and getting into the music as you play. He's making little notes on his parchment paper clipboard. <laughs> this probably shouldn't exist. Um, <laughs> and when you're finished, he stands up and tucks his clipboard under his arm and gives you very big applause. He's very Thank impressed. Thank you. Thank you. Trigus, you were not exaggerating about your talent, my friend. We would be more than happy to have you perform as our opening act this evening at the Playhouse. Wonderful. How much? <laughs> you did not hesitate. <laughs> Verstam, Verstam smiles at your cleverness. Uh, Verstam, he looks thoughtfully at you guys, and he's nodding, and he says, how does how does 50 gold sound? Trigus, what do you think? I think it's wonderful. I pay him? No. <laughs> oh, no? no? Okay. No. Uh, he pays you. Oh, that's more. even better. Wonderful. Great. Well, uh, he'll do it. All right. 50 gold it is. So you will be paid after your performance, of course. Wonderful. And um, our, our main show tonight is scheduled to start after sundown. So um, if you guys, if you can, Trigus, make sure that you are here 45 minutes or so before sundown. Yes. So we can get you ready to perform. We Wonderful. We're very grateful to have you. Are there any other friendly people, such as yourself, here in town that we can speak with? Some people are quite rude. Versum kind of smiles and nods and, and looks down a little bit. Ah, I see you visited the lofts. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, the lofts are the more wealthy side of town. There actually is a, a much more welcoming uh, side to, uh, to our city. I apologize. I hope no one was too rude to you. There is um, a section of shops in the Neaths, and it's uh, actually, if you go out the playhouse and you'll pass a row of taverns, and behind the taverns you'll find the shops in the Neaths, and people are much more friendly to visitors in the Neaths. Oh, wonderful. Shall That's we good. go there? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Should we go to a tavern and get some soup? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you exit the playhouse. And you start headed towards what appears to be the row of taverns, four of them right in a row. And um, you uh, can see the uh, signs outside of them. You've got the Yellow Beak Saloon. You have Muckle Shooters. You've got <laughs> Round the Pub and All That Glitters. And All That Glitters looks almost like it belongs in the lofts. It looks very upscale and fancy. There's a, a guard standing outside the door with a... Uh, it's not a velvet rope, but it is a rope um, kind of stopping people from going in, and he's just letting them in one by one after they, uh, after he looks for their names on a list. The, uh, the Yellow Beak Saloon looks a little run down. Muckle shooters, you can hear loud cheers from inside, and uh, it seems a little rowdy, but, but also like a good, fun, you can, you can hear a good time coming from out of there. Uh, around the pub looks pretty... Pretty friendly and warm, and um, you can hear some milder um, kind of cheering from inside there, but it's not quite as rowdy as Muckle Shooters. All right, which one do you guys want to go to? The friendlier, more warm vibe. Right. All right, you guys head into Round the Pub. As you walk in the door, there's um, you see a bartender. She is a, a human bartender um, who sees the three of you enter. It's it's kind of a smaller tavern. It's um, it's not it's not super crowded. And as you enter, the the woman behind the bar she kind of waves at you and and gives you a smile and says, "Welcome to Round the Pub. Is there something I can help you folks with today?" Hello. Do you have soup? Of course we have soup. Ah. <laughs> some of the best soup in Narstad, I'd, ah. I'd say. I'd love to have some soup. Fantastic. So one soup. Anything else for your friends here? <laughs> I will take some soup as well. Uh, you got any meat? <laughs> <laughs> and the bartender smiles and nods and says, yes, of course. We have some of the finest lamb available in Narstad. And I, I would recommend it. It's quite delicious. I'll take it. <laughs> Two soups and an, and an order of lamb. Okay, so she takes your gold and uh, comes back a few moments later carrying uh, two bowls of soup and she passes you your, your bowls and your spoons and then she runs back into the kitchen and comes back with a big leg of lamb mm. uh, on, a, on a plate and hands it to you, Ragna. Yeah, so you guys sit down and enjoy your meal. 
So Rachna tilts her head down a little bit and says just a, a silent prayer to herself for just a few seconds. And then she lifts her head up and she looks real excited <laughs> to eat uh, this big hunk of meat in front of her. And uh, she looks like she's about to tear into it, but then she remembers her manners and she eats it more politely, <laughs> however that works. <laughs> together. And then in but the like, meantime, Trigus is spooning soup onto his shoulders. Oh no! no. And I shout, Trigus. I am pleased with the soup! <laughs> Trigus, you, you might want to eat some of that. You need the sustenance. Yes. yes, I am. I was just preparing my preparing myself. But I do enjoy how it glistens off of my scales. But I will eat the rest. That's good. Mm-hmm. You you need uh, you need your energy. You can have a yes, I do. I, I can't believe that we... <laughs> I was gonna say trick them into it, uh, but I can't believe we tricked them into it. <laughs> At this point, I think Rachna has stopped trying to use any kind of utensils and has just picked up the leg and is just chewing off of it yeah. normally. This is exciting. <laughs> Are you nervous, Trigus, about your performance? No. I. The only thing I would be nervous about would be: Will the audience be prepared for the majesty of my performance? Good way to go. Uh, about they it. will all be seated, which is better for them because occasionally people do lose consciousness when I play. You, like they fall asleep or they just pass they, out? They absolutely collapse. Yes, they pass out. <laughs> so the three of you um, enjoy your meal. You finished eating. Uh, Rachna immediately looks like she feels bad that she's forgotten this entire mission the moment that she left and walked into town and saw the first blacksmith that she came across. Um, she looks kind of like disappointed or guilty, um, and she goes, maybe we should ask around a few more people. Uh, uh, Verstam said that there's not a lot of gnomes around, but hey, when we first got here, the, a gnome went in ahead of us. Do you guys remember mm-hmm. that? He had that like patchwork oh. coat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Maybe if we find that guy, maybe he'll know something. It shouldn't be too hard to find a gnome if there's not too many gnomes yeah. around, right? We just, yes. And perhaps after Trigus's performance, we can ask his adoring fans if they have seen any gnomes, too. Oh, that's a good point. If they're still around. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Not that they would leave your performance. I mean, yeah. I think it's going to be great. Um, so, yeah, we've still got some time to kill. Guys, should we... Uh, maybe we should ask the tavern keeper here. It's a good idea. Good idea. <laughs> did we get her name? You did not. <laughs> I feel bad that I keep forgetting to ask people their names. <laughs> what ho, soup lady? No. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of laughs a little bit and cocks her head and 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 looks at you. <laughs> Ken, is there anything you three need? I'm sorry, we didn't get your name. Oh, I'm Morgan. Oh, thank you so much. The food is great. Thank you. We are trying to find a tiny man. Uh, <laughs> Kind of. Morgan looks at the uh, Rakna and Mara kind of inquisitively. Um, well, we, we've we heard there's been some, uh, there have been some attacks on gnomes recently, specifically gnomes. The the trail kind of led us here. I was wondering if maybe you've heard anything or if you knew anything about anything that's going on. Morgan kind of looks the three of you over. She looks, suspicious is maybe a strong word, she looks a little cautious. She looks like she's choosing her next words pretty carefully. We may have had a few people in here asking similar questions recently. It's a little hard to know who to trust, and so I generally have tried to stay out of it. Can you help us find the tiny man? Or the people who came in here asking about it? Do you know who they were? I don't, which is why I didn't give them information. You never know who's looking to help and who's looking to hurt. Mm. How long ago were they here? Mm, I would say probably a fortnight ago. Would that have been around the time that we were in that village with the gnome with the exploding head? Oh, oh. About two weeks ago you guys were in... Oh, good call, <laughs> Magma. Do you know where they were heading? She, she, looks, she looks again very cautious. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if you three are trying to help or not, but someone who's a much better judge of character than I am is is Romulus, and he works at the jeweler store in the Neaths. Maybe ask him a couple of questions, and if he finds you trustworthy, he might be willing to help you out a bit. 
It's nothing uh, against you. I just, <laughs> I don't know you. No, I, I get it. Which one's the jewelry store? Um, you'll find it in the row of shops behind the taverns in the Neaths. I believe it's the center one. Well, thank you for the information and the food. And I You're think quite welcome. Do you need a napkin, sir? I see you've got some <laughs> soup on your shoulders. Um, no, this is this is part of my part of my aesthetic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is it is it a Triton tradition? It is now. Yes. I see. I from what I understand, every Triton that makes his way to land is adorned with soup. And it's quite a high honor, from what I remember. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of nods and, and looks at you a little bit funny, but, but she nods and says, Well, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your afternoon here. Thank, Thank you. you. I will be performing later. Oh. Would you please uh, join us? What type of performance? Uh, I will be playing the bagpipes okay. and acting and possibly singing. Wow. If nobody has completely passed out from the bagpipes. Oh, are they amazing? <laughs> no, they're amazing. <laughs> they're wondrous. And, and where will you be performing? At the Narstad Playhouse. <laughs> Oh, Verstone, you must have met then. Yes. Very good. He's a wonderful member of our community. Yes, he's Rachna's brother. He's not. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> she looks kind of back and forth between Rachna and Trigus. I would be happy to come see you perform in any case. Wonderful, Morgan. So I will see you this evening then at the Playhouse. Okay. Cool. All right, cool. Let's go. Thanks for everything. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Morgan looks real amused and kind of waves at you as you leave the tavern, as you leave the, uh, round the pub. <laughs> All right, uh, let's find this jewelry store. So, um, sure enough, uh, there was the row of four different taverns, and behind that row of taverns you see, um, a row of seven much smaller shops than the shops that you saw when you first entered the city. And just like Morgan said, the center shop has a big sign outside that says jeweler, and you can also see a flag hanging from one of the windows, and it is a patchwork flag. Oh! oh. <laughs> what? You enter the jewelry shop and a small bell tinkles above the door. Um, it's uh, it's a humble looking looking shop, but there are some display cases that have um, various types of gemstones in them. Um, there's all different colors and sizes and shapes. It's actually it's quite beautiful in here, just because of the variety of different stones that are in in this shop. Um, you see an elven man standing behind the counter. Uh, he's he's tall and um, he's very thin. He's got kind of a long, pointy nose, um, and he's he's wearing glasses. <laughs> Ragna takes a step like forward and immediately says hello, and she she's trying to speak before Trigus does. Um, <laughs> The elf looks up from, from what he was doing, which was polishing um, polishing a green, uh, a very, very large green uh, gemstone, and he, he looks up and says, Ah, hello, welcome, welcome to my, to my jewelry store. Are you, are you Romulus? He looks a little surprised, but he, he nods and says, Why, why yes, yes I am Romulus. What can I do for you today? Uh, well, we're not here to shop. <laughs> um, he looks at you a little strangely. Uh, well, we heard that you might know something about what's going on, maybe? And then Trigus peeks around. <laughs> <laughs> what ho, good sir? <laughs> Do you use the uh, protrusion on your face to stab people? That we were looking for. Um, we, we Morgan, Morgan said that you might be able to tell us about what's going on with the you're all yes. three talking at once. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, we were told we we were told you might know something about the gnomes. Something. Something's going on bad. <laughs> something's going on bad. <laughs> there are trouble. <laughs> there are trouble. <laughs> His eyes get a little wide, and he doesn't know which. 
which one of you to respond to first. <laughs> Hopefully not trans. <laughs> he looks the three of you over. <laughs> ah, so you are here about the gnomes. Yes. I might be able to help you out. Wait right here. And then he he disappears into the back room. Mm-hmm.